thank you for joining us for another episode of Marking the Times. Uh, this is Dr. Mark Hitchcock here in Edmond, Oklahoma, at Faith Bible Church. And uh, we appreciate you joining us for these uh, episodes of Marking the Times. We try to bring updates of things that are happening in our culture and in the world geopolitically that uh, have some uh, bearing on, on Bible prophecy or end time prophecy, but also other questions you'd like to send in uh, to our Facebook page. We love to answer those. Uh, you know, I want to talk with you today about something I think is probably on a lot of people's minds, and that's what we see happening in our culture in Virginia and New York and really happening other places on, on the front of, of abortion, uh, of the murdering of unborn children. Uh, we, we've seen this kind of with just sickening horror, but it, it brings to mind to me a specific passage in Scripture. So I want to begin there and then talk about what we're seeing in our culture and, and what we do in light of that. Uh, many of you know this passage well, 2 Timothy uh, chapter 3, verse 1. This is the last um, letter that Paul wrote, the last inspired letter. He's in prison in Rome, about to die, about to be uh, martyred. And he says, but realize this, in the last days, difficult times will come. Now, the last days is this whole messianic era, this whole time between the first and second comings of Jesus. But he says here, in the last days, during this whole extended period of the last days, difficult times will come. So the last days will be punctuated by some times that are especially difficult. Now, that word difficult there, the King James translates it perilous. Perilous times will come. But it's the same word used back in Matthew 8 of the man there that was uh, uh, demon-possessed who cut himself with, with, with stones and rocks. And really it means, it means dangerous or violent and was even used in ancient times of a wound that was ugly or infected. So you could translate this in the last days, violent, dangerous, uh, ugly times uh, will come. And he goes on then and gives this long litany uh, of characteristics of these perilous times. And the first one is men will be lovers of self. And so it's, it's really men will be self-lovers rather than God-lovers, which basically just looks at the humanism that's invaded our world. Several other things are mentioned, but he gets on down to verse 3 and he says, unloving. And it's the word astorgoi in Greek, which means without natural affection. It's even used of the, the natural affection in family relationships. And I think with what we see today in abortion, uh, we see this astorgoi, this without natural affection, on display tragically in our culture. Um, you know, really in our culture today, life is under attack. Uh, many have said that there's a shameless embrace, really, of a culture of death. Uh, we see just uh, stuff that, that's stunning and sickening in our culture. It's just repugnant and reprehensible. Um, you all know, you've probably been watching the news, in Virginia, a, a delegate there uh, in, the, in, the, in the House uh, introduced a bill affirming abortion up to the moment of birth. And she was even questioned about this, about uh, even when the woman is dilated, I mean, up to the moment of birth. And, and that's what she affirmed that she wanted to have passed. Now, it, it didn't pass there, uh, but even in the midst of active labor, the child can be killed at that point. Uh, the Democratic uh, uh, Virginia governor, Ralph Northam, went even further. Many of you have seen his comments that basically uh, sanction infanticide. And the tragedy of that is he himself is a, a pediatrician. And he ran and had ads of himself you know, with a stethoscope you know, treating young children. Yet he, he just talked about it in a clinical way that was really just uh, ghoulish and haunting. Um, here's a couple things that have been said I just share with you I've read that I thought were powerful. Someone said this, this week has been like a competition among politicians in the Commonwealth of Virginia to see who can be the most morally abhorrent. Here's another quote, once upon a time, pro-life advocates thought the abortion debate couldn't get any more heinous than partial birth abortion at 20 weeks. However, never underestimate the downward spiral of a depraved culture that shuns morality, mocks faith, and disregards integrity. Those are some powerful quotes, but we saw that. And then even before that, we'd seen this uh, late-term abortion bill pass in New York and in, in their, in their uh, legislature. And at, at the end of this, again, this scene, it was just a, a, a ghoulish scene of the legislators and the people. They're standing up and cheering there in Albany, New York. And uh, Governor Cuomo just beaming about this accomplishment. What's tragic about this is, is after this was passed, uh, the, the World Trade Center was, was bathed in pink to celebrate this decision. 
And one of the things that's at the Trade Center, of course, at the memorial that's there, is the names of everyone who died. And there are the names of 11 unborn children who were lost with their expectant mothers at 9-11. Now, the irony of that, the, the tragic irony of that couldn't be greater. You know, I love the old uh, Western, you know, tombstone, you know, where uh, uh, Doc Holliday says near the end of the movie, you know, my hypocrisy knows no bounds. And now that's what we see here. Their hypocrisy knows no bounds. We're, we're honoring 11 children, unborn children, who died in 9-11, and yet at the same time celebrating uh, the killing of children in late-term abortion. So we see this happening in our culture, a culture of death uh, that we see rising in our, in our nation. And we say, well, what do we do in times like this? Well, you know, we, 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 continue to, we continue to pray for our country. We continue to do what we can do in our own states, uh, through our own, our own legislature. Uh, we live godly lives ourselves. We talk to our friends and people we know about this. Um, and and we, want to, we support life. Uh, but I think another thing we do in a time like this is we look up. Uh, we look at this world around us and we see just the world descending into a place that many of us never thought we could see it descend to. I mean, you think about what we see in our culture. We've rejected natural marriage. We've rejected natural gender. We've rejected natural law and life in our culture. It's kind of like there's a race to the bottom. So I think the coming of Jesus Christ is soon. I really do. And I'm not saying that in an escapist way. Hey, we're just going to be out of here and don't worry about our world. While we're here, we need to do what we can while we can. Uh, but I think we see these kinds of things happening. It's a picture of that Romans 1 where God is abandoning, abandoning us uh, to our own ways. And, and people really, when they lose God, they lose themselves. And in many ways, they lose their minds about these things in our culture. So it's a, it's a dark time. It's a sad time for our culture. But as believers in Jesus Christ, we want to wake up every day. We want to have joy in what God has done for us. We want to share the good news and have the impact that we can have in whatever sphere of influence that God has given to us. So don't give up. Uh, don't be uh, just sitting around so discouraged about this uh, that you don't continue to fight the fight and, uh, and live for the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's be faithful ambassadors and faithful uh, warriors for him in this spiritual war until our Lord Jesus comes. Well, thank you for joining us today, and we hope you'll join us again next time. God bless you till then.